So our one last problem, if you remember, we have one other branch of the tree, which is what to do if you're going to infinity and it's a polynomial. Polynomial means many terms. It'll all be whole number powers. So that's a two-term polynomial. The rule still applies. If it's a polynomial, it won't be a fraction. Since it's a fraction, a rational function, you have to get the highest power of the top and the bottom. On the polynomial, you just use the highest power, and that's it. The highest power term, I should say. While we're there writing, this is a commercial break. Remember, Monday is the beginning of homecoming week, and Monday is superhero day. You need two majors, or a major and two minors would work. Capes count as majors. I don't know about, been asked about maths. I don't know if they're majors or minors. Senior class is going to take the entire spirit competition, so of course you all will show up dressed up. Thanks. This commercial has been approved by Bailey Okay. Okay. I'm worried about getting to my asymptotes here. Okay. So, yeah, so I guess we need to finish that. What's the highest power of the term you see in this problem? The, so we will take the entire thing, including the coefficient. You've got a negative 3z squared. That negative 3 is going to have an impact here. Because then, what am I going to do to figure out the answer? Yeah. So you have negative 3 on the outside times negative infinity getting squared. So what's it going to come out to be? Yeah, because that's going to, squaring is going to make it positive, but when you multiply it by negative 3, it's going to go back to a negative infinity as your solution. Okay, well, if it's, a, if it's a fraction, then it's automatically a rational function, and you take the highest power from top and bottom, always. Polynomials cannot be fractions. They have to be individual single terms. Okay, so that's the rules of excitement there. Limits to infinity. You think? Oh, you figure out how to get beyond infinity. <laughs> now, all this good stuff I've taught you lets you locate where asymptotes are located on graphs. When we get ready to draw graphs in like November. We'll come back and do this asymptote stuff. But it seems to help if I teach it now, because then when I want you to use it the second time, there. So I'm not about to tell you anything you don't know. You already know how to work these limit problems, but you just need to realize that limits tell you where asymptotes are located. And to prove my point, let me draw you a quick picture. Say that's 3 and this is 2, and you've got just some basic action going here. Hallway. Hallway, yep. All right. So, if I was doing limits, what would tell me I have a vertical asymptote at 3? What kind of, what, what what are, what's the limit as you approach 3 from the left side and the right side? You're either getting negative infinity or positive infinity. So if you get infinity as an answer, it's pretty much a hint that, hey, gee, I've got an asymptote there. And the same way, in this case, when I get, when it's falling to horizontal asymptote, and actually let me specify this. This would be a limit approaching 3, and you would get infinity as an answer, positive or negative. Up here, what <laughs> limit would it be that makes me follow the horizontal asymptote. Okay, I just said it's x going to infinity, is he right? Because it's when your x coordinates are going out to the far right or the far left, you're going to infinity, and you get what is an answer? Two. You get a number as an answer. So verticals will spell this out for you. Verticals have
happen when you're doing a limit going to a number and you get infinity. Horizontals happen when you're going to infinity and you get a number. So to me, I, they're the exact reverse of each other. Okay, the question is, you can have one question with this. And suppose I told you I wanted you to find me the asymptotes for this function. Okay. I want you to find the all horizontal and vertical asymptotes for that particular function. So we're going to do verticals first. How do you check for vertical asymptotes? Which is say you do for vertical. You have to do a limit approaching some number. Well, the question is, what number would you test? <laughs> okay, that's the function, but what number am I approaching? I just approach every possible number on the graph, so we add it to the rest of the slide. Say it again. You think we're approaching two? Why? What are, what are you looking at? Okay. What you need to test. When we get to get a vertical asymptote, that was when we had to get a number over zero. When we got infinity as an answer on yesterday's assignment, you get a number over zero. So it has to be something that makes your denominator equal to zero. So you're gonna whenever you're doing verticals, the number you test is the number that makes the denominator equal zero. That's how you know what to test. So yes, you're going to need to factor this denominator and figure out what numbers does it equal zero at? While you're at it, though, if you think your numerator is going to factor, I would do that. Will this numerator factor? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can pull an x out. What's going to happen? Okay, x minus two cancels out. What do we know happens when the, do they cancel? I do. We're going to have a hole there. It's not going to be an asymptote. It's going to be a hole because it cancels. So actually, in reality, since those cancel, you can do this. You can do the limit. The only thing that's going to make it equal zero is what number? Negative three. You can actually do this limit with the original function, or if you want to, you can, all, you can do the limit on just the, what's left after it's factored and canceled. Uh, if you'll get the same answer either way. So you got a preference? Do you want to do the whole thing, or do you want to do the x over x plus three? Howdy, Alex. Glad to see you. Do you realize this class is going to end in like two minutes, and yeah. so don't get real comfortable. Mm -hmm. But we'll get people to move your stuff for you. Right. <laughs> okay, so pick that. Use the original, use that. Doesn't matter. Use the simplified one. It makes no difference, you'll get the same answer. Okay. So, how do you do a limit go to a number? Sub it in. So we know we got negative 3 over 0. What do we do when we have number over 0? Uh, test points. Yesterday's assignment, test points. What, so, which side do I do? Yeah, actually, if you can get even one side to go to infinity, it's an asymptote. So pick a side. Positive. All right. What's positive side of negative three? Doesn't matter which side you test. That'd be negative two point nine. So the top would be negative. If I put negative two point nine in there, what's the bottom? Negative two point nine plus three. Positive, which gives me a negative infinity. So therefore, since it went to infinity, you know you have a vertical there. If you get a number, it didn't have a vertical there. So we would say, and verticals are vertical lines, so you, they will write it as x equals negative 3 because we write vertical lines as x equals lines. Please do that. Okay. Am I going to make it? Okay. Horizontal. 
What does our little rule say you do to find a horizontal? It says do a limit as you go to infinity. Okay, which infinity do you go to? Either, unless it has an even root. If it has an even root, you'll have to do both. But otherwise, it doesn't matter. Personally, I usually just do positive infinity. How do you do limits going to infinity? Look at your tree. Highest power terms, which in, would be x squared over x squared, which reduces to 1. And so you have a horizontal at y equals 1.